Hello and welcome to this event from the Australia Papua New Guinea Network here at the Lowy Institute. My name is Shane McLeod. I'm the project director here at the network. I want to first acknowledge and pay respects to the traditional owners of the lands on which the Lowy Institute is built. That's the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. I'll pay tribute to the traditional owners and their leaders and elders. Now, over the last few months here at the AusPNG Network, we've been uh, hosting a series of events focused on the pandemic and its impact on Papua New Guinea. We've heard from key figures, including the health minister, Jelta Wong, from provincial health officials dealing with the pandemic across PNG, and also with researchers who've been looking at the impact of misinformation and what it's been uh, doing to the pandemic response across the country. Today, we're lucky to be joined by a key figure in PNG's pandemic response, the PNG Police Commissioner and Pandemic Controller, David Manning. Mr. Manning has been Police Commissioner since 2019 and from the start of last year has been the key figure in responding to and implementing government policy around the pandemic. Uh, Commissioner Manning has been able to spare a bit of time for us today and I'm very pleased to welcome him joining us from Port Moresby. Hello to you, Commissioner. Good morning, Shane, and uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. Now, I wanted to start off by just sort of understanding the role of controller. Um, the way that PNG has set up to manage the pandemic puts you very much at the centre of things alongside your, I'm assuming, very busy job as police commissioner as well. So tell us about that structure. How does it work and why has PNG set up the pandemic response that way? Thanks, Shane. So firstly, let me, um, uh, thanks for in inviting me today. Um, let me say at the outset that Australia's support to PNG in the last 18 months has been monumental. Um, without your commitment, <clears throat> excuse me, without your commitment to uh, to your closest neighbour, neighbour PNG would be in a very very different position than we are than we are now. Uh, personally, from and from uh, perspective of the government of Papua New Guinea. Uh, let me say thank you to, to your listeners and taxpayers for your assistance. Um, and, as, and as far as your, your, your question is concerned, the government of PNG was very much uh, alerted to the fact of, of, of what could potentially be a, a catastrophic event for, for Papua New Guinea if we, as in the government, did not respond appropriately earlier on. Um, we had uh, we had numerous uh, discussions with uh, relevant stakeholders, primarily in the in the in the in the um, government sectors, as to what would be an appropriate response should we have a um, have a case of, of COVID in, in the country. Um, this, of course, compelled the government based on on uh, our, um, our national security advisory uh, committee through the National Security Council um, as advice to, to Cabinet that um, we needed to act swiftly um, to allow us to, to basically give us a fighting chance if we, if we were to have a, a, um, have a, a case of COVID in, or detected in the country. With, with that advice, the government of Papua New Guinea uh, through Cabinet um, then um, when we, we, when we uh, uh, did detect our first case, which was a, um, um, which was imported, uh, which was imported, it was a, um, a member, um, a uh, staff of one of the mining companies, so a fly in fly out uh, staff. Uh, we immediately uh, convened the NSAC and, um, and uh, the and cabinet on advice, uh, then forward advice to the governor general to, to declare a state of emergency, which uh, by law is is uh, a three month dura duration. So our saving grace back then was um, was that we acted swiftly and decisively in the in the in, um, in the sense that we declared a state of emergency, basically locking the whole country down, um, whilst we conducted contact tracing. Um, Consequently, after that, uh, after the three-month period, the, the government then acted uh, acted swiftly in, in um, um, drafting up the Pandemic Act of 2020, which allowed us to continue our, our efforts um, and, uh, of course, uh, gave creation to the Office of the Controller, 
the pandemic controller. Um, uh, of course, there was some there was some uh, pushback on on how on how we were able to continue our efforts under a state of emergency. Of course, uh, there's quite uh, um, quite restrictive in in terms of individual rights, and uh, and the government was was aware of that of that. Um, uh, the, the implications of, of extending the state of emergency, and therefore uh, opted for a opted for a um, uh, the enactment of uh, the Pandemic Act of 2020, um, of course, that which allowed us to continue our efforts to our efforts to date. Now, the Office of the Controller is very much uh, responsible for 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 leading the, the government's efforts in in responding to COVID. Um, um, and of course, uh, coordinating uh, not only our domestic efforts, but also our in, uh, international assistance. Uh, of course, I've, I've made mention of the the, um, the great assistance that the, 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 the government of Australia and its people have, have, uh, have generously uh, given to um, to Papua New Guinea. And uh, we continuously are reminded that uh, we would have been in a very very um, different situation, if not a difficult situation, if not if uh, if it wasn't for the likes of Australia and other countries, um, to uh, be able to recognise that we were in dire need of assistance, and uh, and as such, um, the officer controllers continues to to ensure that we we um, not only sustain our efforts but also recognise our our um, our as critical gaps in our public health system and our ability to continue to. To provide that uh, that uh, that response on behalf of the government and its people, I'll be keen to come back to you and talk about some of those those health challenges because I know even the prime minister has highlighted the the sort of gaps and the weaknesses that it has revealed in PNG's health system. But can I take you to that that first period? You know, responding to the pandemic, PNG had quite a lot of success in those early few months, really, with the isolation a lockdown strategy and, and efforts that really seemed to tamp it down. Do you think it was that early success that then sort of came back to bite you afterwards, you know, when you had the, the second wave towards the end of last year, early this year? Um, what do you think happened in that intervening period? Yes, um, it, look, we, we um, I guess we were lulled, lulled into a, a sense of complacency. Um, after we had the, um, the first case, our rates of, of um, not only detecting um, uh, other COVID cases after that, after the first index case, but uh, the, um, our rate of community transmission was was um, uh, wasn't at the at the stage where it it uh, raised any alarm bells, um, and therefore I think the, the country as a whole probably felt that um, you know that this this COVID nineteen um, was a, a foreign disease, and um, you know that the, the chances of us uh, being severely affected by it would um, were very slim, and we did not have the data at the time to to rebut those the, the, that type of thinking and those views. Um, but of course, forward eighteen months, uh, fast forward eighteen months, and we, 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 we've seen that uh, we were, well, we're basically paying the price for, for complacency that was that was very much a result of our success in, in acting swiftly, um, you know, to sustain um, that type of uh, response in, in in the sense that the in the sense of um, you know complete lockdown of the country. Um, was uh, was met with uh, with a lot of skepticism, a lot of uh, resistance, especially from from the private sector, and of course uh, people and people were, were, were losing jobs. And we had uh, uh, we had um, uh, we had significant challenges with the uh, companies keeping their or businesses keeping their their doors open for business because it was just uh, a difficult period to to conduct business. And of course, this is not you know completely unique to, to Papua New Guinea, but uh, of course around the world. Um, so yeah, so we, we just didn't have the data then to, to, to continue um, you know, uh, justifying a, 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 um, a sustained period of, of, um, of, of a lockdown in which we, we had in the, in the three month period. Um, and of course, uh, you know, 
pressures from from uh, within government as well as uh, all sectors of, of the community um, cause us to reassess um, what what could possibly be done um, post the state of emergency. Um, and one of them was uh, to uh, develop a, 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 um, a national strategy going forward, and that's the, um, the nuclear passing strategy that, uh, that uh, was uh, signed off by Cabinet to be used to um, basically return to the new normal. Um, and, and of course, uh, you know, it, it, we issued numerous um, measures and di uh, directions over, over that period, and uh, we still do. Um, I guess the, the biggest uh, challenge for us is the enforcement of those of those measures, um, and of course the attitude of our of our people. Um, we'd, we'd rather see something unfold before our, our eyes before we we um, <clears throat> before our people so generally subscribe to that the, that we are in the face of a pandemic. But nevertheless, we we continue. Uh, it is very much the the, the, the government's. Um, government's intent that we continue our, our efforts uh, or, um, all the while looking at, at um, possible opportunities to to uh, return to the new normal but uh, do it as safely and as responsibly as, as 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 we can yeah so so where 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 do you see things are at now you had obviously a huge surge in cases in the early part of this year seems to have stabilized a little over the last month or so. Are you confident that things are relatively under control? Uh, in, in, in as far as community transmissions are concerned, and, and we're gonna just go back to our initial response to when, um, to when uh, we had our first surge earlier this year, around March, we, we did uh, send out an, an SOS to, to, of course, to Australia and other countries to, to provide um, um, EMTs, emergency medical teams, to come up and, and assist. Of course, a lot of our efforts are focused on protecting our fragile health system, as you as you mentioned earlier. And um, and as such, when we were hit with that uh, with our, our wave, and again, it, 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 our epidemiologists would, would would argue that that was most likely our, our first significant wave. But um, based on on what we experienced uh, last year. Um, all indications are that it, it, um, it was our second wave. Now, after OSMAT, um, you know, OSMAT uh, came through, that's the Australian um, EMT team came through. Um, they've been up here um, earlier on in our, in our response and, uh, of course, we were able to, to scramble and come up again to, to our assistance. Um, in, as part of their debrief, they did um, indicate that um, we're most likely to see see maybe uh, another similar incident happening through, throughout this, this, this uh, 12 to 18 month period, but not necessarily in, in Port Moresby or in NCD. Um, and that is where we, we are mindful and continue to, to, um, to work with, uh, with our provincial authorities because the, 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 uh, the assessment by OSMAT is that this would, the third wave of most likely um, be experienced in, in one of the other provinces. And of course, um, with our fragile health system, um, the, our, the, the further you move away from, from the National Capital District, um, the more and more vulnerable we are in terms of being able to respond appropriately to, a, to a, um, an outbreak or a surge. You mentioned OSMAT. I know that one of the things that was a big focus both last year and this year has been the data collection, the data reporting, um, the testing capability. Um, do, you, do you feel that that's under control now, that you have a, a picture of how the, pandemic, uh, how the pandemic trends and being able to get that data that helps you make decisions? Well, basically, in, uh, basically we, we, are, we have a clearer picture now, not, not no, I won't be brave enough to say we have a, a whole picture of, of what's happening in, in the country as far as COVID is concerned, but we are, I guess, um, we are armed with the better information and, and more information that we had, um, uh, you know, six to six, six to 12 months ago. Um, well, um, I think that I confidently say that we have more information now and more understanding of, of, of um, how COVID is behaving in, in the country than we did when we first started. Um, yes, we continue to have um, uh, 
significant challenges with with uh, capturing data, um, um, you know, of which we we worked um, closely with uh, with obviously DFAT and um, and WHO to see how best we can we can um, resolve those resolve those those issues and and best. Uh, Best um, resolve those those challenges, but also at the same time, um, we've also uh, mindful of the fact that we we did struggle in the early days as um, with testing. Um, you know, of course, we're guided by best practices as to uh, as to responding to COVID, and, and testing has been has been um, well documented to be um, you know to be. Uh, um, uh, an appropriate response to better understand COVID in the country. We've uh, recently taken, um, uh, well, we've received, we've received uh, uh, timely um, assistance from the Mindaroo Foundation. Um, so an air lab has been set up and that's, to, uh, that's basically allowed us to, to not, not only ramp up the number of testing, but also um, the turnaround in, in getting results back. Um, has um, is, is, is much has been improved as, um, compared to compared to in the last uh, six to twelve months. So yes, data continues to be um, a challenge for us. Um, testing and getting results back has been a challenge, but we're hoping that uh, with the with the assistance from Mindaroo Foundation and having this air lab um, that's recently been been set up, we'll be able to not only um, up our numbers in, in terms of testing, but uh, getting a, a result back to, to, the, to our people quicker. Um, yeah, so it, it uh, so we, we're working closely with WHO and, and, and others to, to make sure that we, we, um, we resolve those, those challenges and, and try to stay ahead of, ahead of, the, ahead of them uh, going forward. Mm. Talking about the health sector, now you come at this as a police officer of um, many years experience. How have you found the experience of being so closely involved in public health? Um, the Prime Minister has talked about weaknesses in PNG's health system. Where do you see those weaknesses are and what are your concerns about them? Yeah, I mean, again, it's it, it has been uh, very much a, a a massive learning curve for everyone that's been involved, uh, let alone the, the, the constabulary. Um, yes, uh, uh, the whole, whole reason why why the constabulary is involved in all of this is that we we bring the, um, uh, we bring command and, and structure to the whole response. Does, does uh, law and order help when you when you're involved in this, like having the law and order background? Uh, yeah, uh, with, with law and order, we, we understand the people better. We understand the, the, the attitudes. We, we also um, have a have a similar with with the health department. We have a um, a, a nationwide uh, uh, footprint, and we're able to um, to have, to pull police resources to 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 assist in the response and provide that that uh, collaborative uh, uh, effort with. Uh, with um, with other other stakeholders to, to and provide that basic basically the leadership um, in in our response. Um, my my assessment of our national uh, department of health and our public health system um, is that it, it's it's very much uh, similar to other other um, national um, departments in in the country. Um, you know, trying to stand up a, a a um, a response amidst you know broken systems um, is is very challenging. Um, the constabulary is not completely void of those challenges. We we also uh, are transitioning to to a more modern force, and bringing those experiences across to to um, to uh, to my role as as, as a controller as um, as. It allowed me a better understanding of the challenges in in, in the health department and the public health system. Um, uh, it, it is definitely a a, um, a concern, um, but at the same time, uh, as the, as the prime minister, uh, Honourable James Marabe has, has has acknowledged that it, it, uh, COVID nineteen is both a curse and a blessing in disguise. A, a curse that it it has come at a time when we're 
well, public health system as it has be, is is at its most vulnerable, but also a blessing that it has allowed us to 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 um, to realize what those what those um, those vulnerabilities are, and then working and in, in strengthening and, and providing and close basically closing those gaps in our capabilities as well as uh, our capacity to to not only respond to COVID uh, from a public health uh, health uh, perspective, but also um, how to better our public health system going forward. Um, if you were to ask as to what my, my, you know, through my experiences working with the National Department of Health and my assessment of the, of, um, the public health system, it, it, it has, it, um, it's it's no short of a miracle that we managed to manage to continue to to provide a response amidst uh, its its challenges and its and its uh, and its shortfalls. Um, you know, there's, there's many issues um, that uh, that uh, the Department of Health has to has to um, address if we were to if we were to um, uh, wish to to better itself. Um, and of course, uh, be in a position that will be able to provide a, a credible response to any any health emergency. Um, with the public health system, you know, our, as I mentioned earlier, the um, the our sole focus in in our response was protecting the health system, protecting our health workers, of course, um, and, and protecting our. our, our uh, our health resources and, and, and also at the same time ensuring that, um, uh, that if we were to have a significant uh, increase or numerous surges in, 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 uh, throughout the provinces that uh, our, our public health system would be able to um, provide at least a response, um, whether it's able to sustain that response is, 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 uh, is another thing. But um, at least come up with a, a credible and coordinated response if we were to, to um, if we were to have um, widespread uh, transmissions in, in in the provinces. So leadership is is definitely um, something that's lacking in in the public health system, um, especially at the NDOH. The, the uh, I've I've commented um, uh, quite openly in in the recent past about the. But how disengaged the National Department of Health is um, to, to government? Do we, we we often shy away from telling you know experts as to what needs to be done, um, and National Department of Health is is is, um, is one is, is one such body of uh, well is one such department that's uh, that's full of full of uh, medical experts, which uh, our politicians tend not to not to um, basically tell them what to do, but. It has very much um, enlightened our political leadership as to what needs to be done in the health system, and uh, you know, we can't we can't continue to ignore the the the, the, the challenges that the, the Department of Health has, um, not only in aligning with with uh, with government uh, response, and uh, uh, but also in in uh, in reconnecting, I guess, with with the governments, you know. Um, in turn, in 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 uh, developing uh, Papua New Guinea, <clears throat> in in as far as uh, our um, health health services, public health services are, are concerned, um, I do not envy the um, the current secretary for uh, for health, Dr. Osborne Liko. He's, he's he's just recently come on board. He's, he's he was appointed late last year. Um, we've had we've shared. <clears throat> um, a lot of our, our views as to what what the um, National Department of Health needs to do, um, of course, in, in not only in, in reconnecting with with government, but also um, in um, ensuring that um, the public health authorities that are that are uh, provincial health authorities that are situ uh, located in the provinces uh, are better better supported um, and resourced. Um, but again, that's that's a, a work in progress for for the Department of National Department of Health. So the leadership, accountability, and, and what's what's being done in terms of of um, uh, developing strategies uh, going forward in, in how we can better our health systems. Um, of course, uh, working closely with our our development partners, uh, WHO and and DFED and the likes, as to um, 
what has been done in the past and there's been significant uh, investment in, in our public health system since independence. Um, as to what we have to show for it, that's, that's, uh, that's something best, uh, best uh, left for, for, the department, for the health secretary to, to, um, to answer. But uh, there's you know, the National Control Center, which was created by the Pandemic Act, was um, was established because of uh, uh, um, cabinet's uh, uh, national executive council's uh, assessment that the NDOH was was uh, not up to providing that that response for COVID. That asks the question then, I guess, about structure and capacity um, right across the country. Do you get the sense that the provinces are taking the lead now? That they're able to. Um, lead a lot of the response that's going on? Is there capacity there? Uh, absolutely, Shane. And, and what's happened uh, since uh, our, our first, uh, well, the, the, the surge in, in, uh, in March was that we, we, we in the NCC had to, had to um, <clears throat> re-strategize and restructure to, to, um, to, um, to best uh, support the public, uh, the provincial health authorities. And, and that's that's what we've done, um, um, and we've we you know we're seeing significant um, significant significant improvements in in uh, in how we how we not only collaborate with and communicate with uh, with the provincial health authorities, but you know a renewed a renewed um, effort in in focus at the provincial level rather than feeding it through the national department of health. Um, and NDOH has taken cue of our of our um, restra uh, basically our restrategizing and restructuring in NCC, and also um, have uh, pretty much dovetailed their efforts to to um, to uh, you know, you know, add value to, to to the focus now that which is which is on the, the provincial health authority, especially now that uh, we we we're pretty much in the in the second month of uh, rolling out our, our uh, vaccination program. Vaccines, I did want to ask you about. Mm -hmm. Vaccine hesitancy has been a huge challenge for PNG, and I know there's a, an issue right now about that first batch of COVAX vaccines getting very near their expiry date. What are the challenges? How do you think it's possible to get more people to step forward and roll up their sleeves under the Sleeves Up campaign to get their vaccinations in PNG? Yeah, um, well, you know, I guess the, the resistance. Uh, or hesitancy for anything relating to COVID started when um, back then, when uh, you know, when there was a lot of a lot of uh, questions asked and a lot of skepticism um, um, uh, basically out there when it came to whether COVID nineteen was real. Unfortunately, that that that, that attitude has as as has been brought across to um, to uh, the, va the vaccine in it, it itself. So we've had to really, uh, you know, work with with a lot of a lot of our not only our development partners but community leaders to 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 cross those hurdles. Cross those hurdles. One of the, so we've, it's now no longer a question of whether COVID nineteen is real. I think. Uh, the, the general population around the country has, has, has um, accepted the fact that COVID-19 is real. Now our significant challenge now is to, to, to convince our people that uh, the vaccination is also real and is necessary to dealing with, with COVID-19. Um, you know, it, 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 it has, um, it, we've had our, our, our uh, hits and misses in, in as far as rolling out the the the, the vaccine, um, we see, and, and it's just been of uh, recently that we, we we've seen that there's more more uh, success to be had if we if we um, partner up with 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 the churches as well as with business uh, with business and um, and industry, so we've uh, we've we've embarked on on. Um, on uh, uh, approving vaccines to be rolled out through the extractive industry. So our mines are our biggest uh, biggest supporters at this point in time. 
our churches as well, um, and and businesses generally. Um, uh, we 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 um, our assessment is that if we we continue that path in in partnering up with uh, with the, with the industry, we will have a greater coverage. Um, where at at this point, we have some in the vicinity of eighty around eighty thousand that uh, will expire um, uh, over the next month. Uh, we say that we can we we're, we're confident we can significantly. Um, decrease uh, the number of, of expired uh, vaccines if we uh, continue our, our efforts in, in, in um, enrolling it out through, through um, you know, especially the extractive industry and businesses, which uh, have now made it, um, you know, basically spend a lot of time and effort in, in getting their, their employees um, you know, opting to take the vaccine. Now, I'm conscious of time. I was keen, just as we finish up today, to get your thoughts on where things are headed. What are the big challenges, do you think, for PNG in these next few months with the pandemic? And what sort of things need to be put in place to get ready for that? I think our people just need, need to understand that, you know, we, you know Papua New Guinea is not, is, is not in this um, by itself, I mean, what we do here has, has a direct reflection on, on how other countries open up, in, in, especially when there's much talk now about economic recovery. Um, of course, we, um, we 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 based on on our on our um, on, on our current hesitancy on 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 vaccinations. We we just you know, just finding it. Um, a, a, a significant challenge to, to basically tell our people and inform our people that look, we either get on board with the rest of the world or we will um, suffer the consequences, um, you know, of, uh, capping our, our flights in, in and out of the country, especially in the, into, uh, into Australia, for instance, does have an impact, a significant impact on, on, on our extractive industry. Um, you know, the gone are the days where people fly in for for, for four weeks and then um, head off home for, for a couple of weeks and back again. Now, we've had uh, mine sites reporting back that um, they've had to keep their people on, you know, for, for months on end because of you know, the, the quarantine quarantine um, requirements uh, of, of host countries or countries which uh, the FIFO people uh, uh, workforce uh, call home. So it does. Whilst the, the you know people say, well, come on, let's let's just get back to normal. Let's let's just pretend that COVID nineteen never never existed. Um, you know, whilst we, we we try to capture their their concerns and and, and you know, find find some middle ground, but uh, it it won't reflect too well on on us as a country and as a government if we were to completely relax relax our measures um, to satisfy satisfy that 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 view of course because we'll you know, we'll only have to have another another surge in the provinces and uh, we'll find ourselves um, locked out from other other countries which we rely on um, but it, you know going forward um, you know, it'll, it'll take some time to get get the the um, vaccine roll out so so accepted to, to, at, at a Greater rate as what we're experiencing now, um, but I think what's 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 required now is, is just greater collaboration with our development partners to see how best we can better our health system. If our if our vaccination program, um, you know, doesn't does not gain momentum, at least we bettered our health public health system. Um, our enforcement of our our, our nuclear passing or our return to new normal. Um, will continue to be uh, uh, absorbed as uh, as business as usual for many from for all sectors throughout the sectors, but uh, at the same time, you know, I think the general population has has accepted that the COVID nineteen has impacted many many uh, economies, many countries, many communities around the world, and uh, we're far from from uh, being an isolated incident. So uh, going forward, you know, bettering our health system, ensuring that uh, we, 
we uh, continue our efforts in vaccine in, in our vaccine rollout, as well as um, you know, focusing on. Uh, and again, uh, this is headed by a different uh, different uh, um, entity, um, focusing on our economic recovery. Um, we did, uh, and the prime minister has made it quite clear that the, the, the jobs will be lost, unfortunately. Um, families will suffer, but it is uh, it, it is not um, an isolated uh, situation for or a unique situation for Papua New Guinea. So, in a, wearing my commissioner's hat, we 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 um, you know, we're twelve months away from the national elections. Um, there has been some sporadic uh, law and order challenges around around the province around the provinces, uh, and as such, uh, you know, we we've yet to see the full brunt of of what a pandemic. And, uh, and the government's response to the pandemic can um, can result in, in, in as far as social social problems are concerned. But um, I think, uh, well, we, we believe that uh, we're on the right track. It's just uh, it, it, it um, it's just uh, it'll just take some time to get uh, to get where we want to be. Commissioner, there are so many more questions we could go into today, but I'm conscious of you're a very busy person, so we shouldn't take up any more of your time today. I appreciate you giving us that time, and I hope for our audience watching on remotely that it's been useful for you as well. Um, we wish you all the best with the ongoing response to the pandemic, and thanks again for your time today. Thank you, Shane. Have a good part of it. And thanks to you there in the audience for watching us today. This has been an event from the Australia Papua New Guinea Network here at the Lowy Institute. Visit our website, ospng.lowyinstitute.org to find out details of what else we've been up to. And we'll look forward to seeing you at one of our events again soon. Bye for now.